Hey, looking for an open source solution to help you with your slim automation efforts with flaky locators? Do you actually hear that Fortnite went down a few times during the busy holiday? And are you looking for an open source security automation as code framework? Find all the answers to these and all other end to end full stack DevOps automation, performance, and security testing in this episode of the Test Skill News Show for the week of January 2nd for the new year of 2022. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. Please enter access code. Hey, Leandro. Welcome to the Guild. Yeah. We are back with the Amigo Joe Colantonio's online conference to give a talk that will be awesome. In my talk, Speed Test for Automations, I will give you an overview on why should we care and make sure that our test automations are fast, as well as some tips on what to do and how to boost their speed. But as usual, it will be coupled with some fun examples and lots of dancing gifs. Do not dare to miss it. Register today and join me with the awesome roster of experts presenting at the Automation Guild 2022 from the 7th to the 11th of February 2022. All right, see you there. This episode of the Test Skill News Show is sponsored by the awesome folks at Apply Tools. If you don't know, Apply Tools is the next generation test automation platform, which is powered by visual AI. This helps you increase quality, accelerate delivery, and helps you to reduce costs for what I think is the world's most intelligent test automation platform. But I know if you're like me, seeing is believing. So check it out for yourself by creating a free account now by clicking in the links in the comment down below. And while you're there, why not like, leave a comment, and subscribe to get alerted every time I release a new episode. First up, automation news. So last week, Jason Aubin actually posted on LinkedIn a holiday gift for test animation engineers from test nerds at Test AI that I think you're really going to find helpful and you definitely should check out. And so Jason doesn't really go into detail of what it is, but if you actually was to click on this link, and just like a good present, you need to unwrap it first. And once you do, you probably are pretty happy about it. Uh, Slam locators can sometimes be an issue or with selectors. So Jason has made it available for you to actually start incorporating AI machine learning into your existing Selenium test now. And as of now, this solution works with Python and Java with Selenium running on Mac OS. And I think in the coming weeks, he says he's going to release JavaScript, Appium, and XUI, and Windows support pretty soon. And as Jason points out, a lot of tests have a half-life, and it's just a matter of time before your animation test starts failing. And a lot of times that's due to a lot of money being spent on fixing or maintaining or fixing up all the broken selectors. So having a solution like this will definitely help make your test more reliable. So thank you, Jason, for that awesome gift. So as we enter into 2022, a automation tool that's been picking up a lot of steam the past few years that I think really has started to reach a peak now is Cypress. So if you want to learn how to get started with Cypress, if you haven't already, I have a great free resource for you, which is another gift, pretty much. And this is from the folks at Apply Tools. So in this webinar, Cypress Ambassador Philip is going to go over ways on how to set up a new Cypress project, the basics of a Cypress syntax, course concepts, and new ideas brought about by using this type of approach of testing, where the true power of Cypress lies, where all the constraints are of Cypress, and what is the future of Cypress. So so if you had on your to-do list for 2022 as one of your New Year's resolutions to learn a new tool or technique, definitely check this out because I think it's a growing trend and a lot of job openings I've started to see recently now also have Cypress listed as a requirement. So it can't hurt to learn it now. So definitely check it out and I have a link for it in the first comment down below. So speaking of the new year, you're probably going to start hearing more and more about uh, the metaverse or testing in the metaverse. So I have a good article on getting up to speed on how DevOps is going to help determine who wins the metaverse race. I think uh, DevOps is a great skill to have as a tester and how you can start learning more about the metaverse so that when your company starts making this transition or you get a new gig, you kind of already know what the moving parts are that you need to do in order to start testing metaverse type of applications and scenarios. This article just goes over how DevOps is leveling the playing field, and it gives four reasons why the metaverse needs DevOps. So if you're someone that likes to get involved in early technology, uh, this is a great place to get started. Metaverse 
It's definitely a growing trend you're probably seeing in 2023 and beyond. I think the next coming two years is going to be people just becoming more familiar with it, becoming more creators, just getting their hands dirty to see what it's all about. And I think it's going to stop picking up after that for sure. So great time to get involved early if you haven't already. One thing I always get asked about a lot on my blog and podcast is how can I automate .NET applications, or how can I use C Sharp? I think C Sharp isn't leveraged as much as it should be. I think it's a great language. And that's why I was really excited to see this next announcement on Twitter from the folks at Execute Automation by Karthik on a new course he has on automation testing of modern apps with C Sharp.NET. So this course looks pretty intensive. You're going to learn C Sharp.NET using Selenium, XUnit, Dependency Injection, Docker, and more. It's over 14 hours of course content and just looks like a really good opportunity for you if this is something that you want to get more knowledge about, about C Shop with Selenium and automation testing. This is a great course to check it out at a very low price. So check it out, and I'll have it in the links down below. And another great way to get started in the new year to accelerate your career in 2022, if you haven't already, is register for this year's Automation Guild. It's the largest online event in the world dedicated 100% just to automation testing. I started it way back in 2017, way before everyone else. So we have a great community of people that have been around for a long time in our private Slack channel. So I highly recommend you check out all the sessions from some of the top automation engineers in our field to discover a tip, tool, technique, or best practice that's going to help you and your teams really succeed with automation this year. And so I definitely highly recommend you check it out and register if you haven't already and hope to see you there. Next up, performance and site reliability news. So last month, we saw a lot of major companies going down due to AWS having outages. And so I would have known about this next one, but I heard that Fortnite went down and had a major outage last week. And I had some nephews and nieces staying with us over the holiday season. And there was a big like panic because Fortnite was down. And if you check out the link I provide in the comment down below, it goes over the timeline of when it went down, when it went back up, and it also will have updates on what the issue was once they're done investigating. I don't know if it has anything to do with AWS or that type of outage, or if it's been hacked, or it just was, uh, they, I know they rolled out a lot of new major updates, so that could be the cause as well. So just something to keep your eye on anytime you see an outage. I always think it's important to find out why it went down, even if it's not your application, because a lot of times you can learn from someone else's failures, so you can bake it into your system beforehand to be a little more proactive so it doesn't happen to you in your company. So definitely check that out in the link down below. So as we saw last month with outages to software like Netflix, Hulu, Twitch, uh, due to AWS, uh, now we see Fortnite down, not sure why. I think it's going to be even a greater need now for people to start investing in monitoring of their cloud native and treating it as code so they stop monitoring their infrastructure all the way. Uh, to production, so they're able to catch these issues early on before their users are impacted. So this next article goes over why cloud native actually needs monitoring as code, and just talks about how monitoring as code is moving from 1.0 to 2.0, and use cases for as code observability tech, and some tips on how to start closely monitoring your CI CD pipelines, and the ultimate goal of a continuous and complete end to end monitoring. Definitely something. As I mentioned, as you've seen with all these outages going on, your company needs to start investing in these as well. And hopefully this article will help persuade you why you need it also. And I think a lot of this actually falls into the realm of site reliability engineering. If you're not sure what SRE is or what site reliability engineering is, it was one of the top trends I saw last year and this year. I keep hearing more and more about it. Actually, Google just launched a new site SRE.Google, as you should definitely check out. I first saw this on Twitter, hosted by Stephanie Wong, with the announcement that they launched the site. And if you actually go to SRE.Google, it goes over what do SREs do, how they handle it at Google. It has a lot of awesome resources around management, practices and processes, foundations and principles, and just a great resource to have in the new year. So definitely check that out. I also came across a open source tool called Hunter R, which helps you detect performance regressions. I believe um, Scott Moore originally posted this, and it was actually a repost of a post by Tony. And Tony is the one that actually originally posted the detecting performance regressions with open source Hunter. 
And what's really cool about Hunter, it's a new open source tool by Datastack to automate the analysis of performance test results. And Hunter solves the scaling limitations inherent in visual inspection of results and the difficulties in using threshold detection limits to identify issues. So it's going to be a big time saver. So thank you, Scott, and from Tony for posting this in LinkedIn. I think it's going to help a lot of performance engineers for sure. Last up, security news. Prancer Enterprise announced the release of cloud security automation as code to the general public. So this is an open source framework that's going to help organizations to deploy secure infrastructure as code. And to learn more, I definitely would check out their GitHub to learn more about how to set it up with Azure. So for everything of value we covered in this week's news episode, head on over to the links in the first comment down below. And while you're there, make sure to check out our sponsor, Apply Tools, by creating a free account and discover how to take your automation testing to the next level, leveraging visual AI in 2022. Create a free account now. And so that's it for this episode of the Test Guild News Show. I'm Joe, and my mission is to help you succeed with creating end-to-end, full-stack, pipeline, automation, awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.